International University and an intern with the Green Climate Fund. So um, I'll be um, the master of um, occasion today and I uh, want to um, welcome you all and thank you for sparing your time to join us um, in this event. Um, it's going to be filled with um, a lot of information. Um, some of us have been in Korea for the past um, three, four, five years, and then we really don't know much about the changes as regards the immigration system and also how much of these policies have changed from 2015 till now. So in this event, we have one of the change makers, the policy suggester, um, in the person of um, Ms. Biali, who will actually give us um, insights as regards um, the immigration system and also how much has this evolutionarized um, in the last um, four or five years. And also, um, she will also give us hints as regards some of the um, um, points we could also leverage in order to increase our points when we want to um, transition from one um, visa status to the other so just sit in tight and um i know it's um the weather is still cold but i think i'm still feeling heat so you can just get yourself uh, a coffee and um enjoy this event so um thank you very much so i will start by introducing our guest here so um on um, first on my list here is um one of our guest speakers um in the person of um miss biali um who happens to be the um, team leader of the Seongnam c foreign student welfare support center you are most welcome ma and thank you for joining us physically in this event yeah next um we also have um yeah yeah we also have with us um in the person of um dr bashir adelodu who is um an advisor of um the Nigerian Student Association, the KNU chapter, and he's also a research professor. You are welcome, you, sir. So don't get it twisted, right? We have NSA KNU and NSA South Korea. So the NSA KNU is the Nigerian Student Association, which is Kyungpook National University chapter, which is the, the first um, um, indigenous um, as um, association for KNU. And then we have the NSA South Korea, which is the National um, Association for the Nigerian Student Association. So when you hear NSA KNU, then it's um, local here, right, in KNU. While the NSA South Korea is the national in South Korea. So just um, a kind of a pointer for us not to get it twisted. So thank you for joining us, sir. Um, also joining us physically here is um, the person of um, Miss Kim. Yonji, Yonji, actually, sorry. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Yeah, so it's been like a um, couple of months since I met you first time, and I've also been struggling to pronounce your name. So <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So she's um she's a doctoral student at the University of Paris site. So um it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for joining us physically. And um also seated with us here is the pioneer president of the NSA South Korea in the person of engineer Anis um, Rabiu. You're welcome, sir. Okay, so um, also seated here are well um, respected um, members of the association who have joined us um, physically. Thank you for sparing your time joining us. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Also, to all the members um, that have actually joined um, online, you're also welcome. Thank you very much for joining. So um, next, um, as we expect more guests to um, attend this occasion, either physically or virtually, we'll introduce them. So without further ado, I would like to, um, go to the, proceed to the next agenda, which is the um, opening remark. Um, I would like to invite the president of um, NSA South Korea and the person of engineer Anis Rabiu to give us um, an opening remark. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, firstly, I would have said I, I, would like, I would like to us to start by um, reciting the national anthem. And, um, yeah. I would like to start by giving. Uh, uh, uh. 
Thank you very much for that. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, our guest speaker, uh, Ms. Bailey, and also uh, the other guest speaker who will be joining us virtually in person of um, Dr. Musa Dan Karimi, uh, the invited, invited guests, members of Nigerian Embassy, who will also be joining later. We also uh, welcome the research professor present here and those up uh, online. Also, I would like to welcome the member of NSC KNU and also the entire member of NSC South Korea. Also, I will also use this opportunity to welcome our advisor, the NSC South Korea advisor. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Anish Rabiu, the founder and the convener of Nigerian Student Association, South Korea. It's my pleasure and honor to welcome every one of us to Kuimpuk National University, Diego, South Korea. Kuimpuk National University, South Korea, uh, serve at the headquarters of the Nigerian Student Association in South Korea. And uh, this is also as host as the uh, NSC's uh, Degu, which is uh, today we are holding the maiden symposium of the Nigerian Korea Immigration, which is the first of its kind in the history of the NSA. Uh, briefly, NSA KNU was established in 2008-18, and at our annual general meeting, which was held last December, the discussion about the NSA South Korea came about, and uh, the national body was launched and established. The NSA KNU serves as a launching platform for the NSA South Korea because of its long-term existence the only function and the largest Nigerian student association in South Korea. Our intention is simple and straightforward, which is to unite, connect, network, and harmonize all Nigerian students in South Korea together to be one family. The, uh, also, for the purpose of doing this is to be able to add more values to ourselves and also give back to our host community and also the, our home community, which is Nigeria. This is the first program of the NSC South Korea since our establishment and the volunteer executive have, are settled with responsibility to build a platform that brings all Nigerian students together under a single um, umbrella in South Korea. So seek, for seeking support from governments, bodies, agencies, diplomatic bodies, policymakers, and also a place to lean on, and also for all Nigerian students in South Korea to have a voice and also to come together. Uh, as they always say, there is, a, there, is a power, there is a power in number and together we must stand. Together, we will also build. The discussion about the Korean immigration system was raised by concerned students after a deep thought about life beyond and after graduation. And mostly when students complete their programs, there's always a lag time or a kind of a lag period whereby people take some time to figure out what to do next. And during this process, there are different kinds of uh, visa application and visa types in South Korea. And what visa types we actually accommodate graduates within the waiting time mostly searching for job during internship, relocation period time, and how are, are, are they going to explore this opportunity to in, integrate into working system of Korea or some other countries. Most students came to, into South Korea through the D2 visa, mostly for those who are students. And after graduation, we usually go through the temporary D10 visa, which requires, uh, which is the uh, job seeking visa. Before making, before, before moving to the next move, before taking the next move, which is usually challenging and difficult. It's uh, the, 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 the visa usually take a duration, a period of six months. And uh, it's mostly uh, the documentation process is a bit challenging and it's a very short period of duration, which mostly the for, for ministry. However, how do we secure and explore the uh, other career types, other visa types in South Korea that will give opportunities for minimum application requirements, renewal period, a longer renewal period, and also will give us a longer opportunity, stay opportunity in South Korea. Also, I think uh, today we have um, we have scholars, we have people who have worked with the Korean immigration systems who are here to tell uh, to tell us more about the Korean immigration system and also the easiest route to securing permanent residence, the PR uh, PR permit in South Korea. And also, there's going to be discussion about other immigration benefits for foreigners and also foreign for foreign students. And also, uh, so many of us who are married, we have our families here in South Korea. So 
most of them they are on F3 visa and uh, mostly they are it's an hindrance of getting work. So we believe we can have an open discussion about how some things can be sorted out and we can have a flexible visa and people can make decision on which kind, uh, the type of visa that we suit an individual. NSA South Korea is for all Nigerian students in South Korea, in respect to our diversity, which cut across ethnicity, religious um, orientation, color, breed, and race. We must start together in uni uni unison. And the association stands to benefit thousands of prospective students, researchers, professionals, who could, who could come to South Korea now and in the future. So I wish every one of us a pleasant symposium. Long life Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long life the Republic of Korea. Long life NSA. Thank you very much. I remain my own self, Ali Kirabi. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. President, for that um, wonderful um, background information and also um, remark. Um, it's indeed um, a well-rounded opening remark. So while um, the convener of NSA South Korea was giving um, his remark, we have um, um, some guests actually um, joined um, physically. And one of um, the people that joined physically is um, a Professor um, Abdul Amid Babatunde Owolabi, the founder and the pioneer president of NSA KNU, and also a research um, um, professor at um, Kyungpook National University. Um, professor Abdul Amid Babatunde Owolabi, please um, can you stand up for recognition? You're welcome, sir. So um, thank you so much for joining. Um, from the remark of the president, you probably have heard the way um, the um, president speaks about the NSA KNU and how it started. So the, the man behind um, the NSA KNU and um, also uh, the vanguard for the foundation that um, actually led to the NSA South Korea. So um, let's um, say a big thank you to him for this, um, for his wonderful and selfless um, um service to um south korea with respect to foreign students thank you so much sir and also we have um oh my name is sick oh, you're welcome sir mr hamza um haruna who is um, a master student at kaist and um is going to be an interpreter so i can't help but to be biased please um can we please give him a round of applause uh it's 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 really not easy to have a namesake around right yeah so thank you so much for joining um you're welcome yeah so in case you're jealous that i'm being biased you can be here next time and then you see whether you find someone that bears your name on the seat it's really not easy right so thank you so much for joining um today we are going to have um two speakers um one of the speakers are here um physically um the second speaker will be joining um um virtually that's in the person of um dr musa dan karami and um but here we have uh, miss biali but before i invite her here i would like to um give uh, um a short or uh, a brief um citation as regards our speaker and um also in case you're still wondering why you are here the truth of the matter is um a lot has changed when it comes to the uh, immigration system um in the last five years and a lot is still changing and um, the um, association actually did well by um, bringing Ms. Biali here because she has been pioneer. She has been pioneering some changes here. So, um, in case you don't know our speaker, so you meet our speaker. Um, her name is Liso Young, um, popularly known as Biali. Um, she is a gra she graduated from Gyeonggi University Graduate School of Public Administration in Social Welfare, and um, she's currently the team leader of um, Songnam C Foreign Student Welfare Support Center. And um, before then, she has um, served um, uh, at the Justice Department Legal Policy, um, especially in the online um, evaluation team during the first and the second um, generation. And um, she has um, received a lot of recommend, um, commendation, and um, some of which include a commendation from the chairman of Gyeonggi Provis Provincial um, Council, and also a commendation from the Seongnam mayor. She also received a commend commendation from the Gyeonggi Province um, gov governor, and um, um, a lot of other um, um, commendations. She has um, written a lot of proposals, and um, some of those proposals are integral to the structured um, system that we have today in the Korean immigration um, um, policies. So in case you're wondering what those proposals are, so she has actually written a proposal to the Ministry of Justice to ban marriage between Korean mentally disabled people and foreign um, women, um, excluding the ban on marriage by physical um, artisans. 
She has also written a, she has also written a proposal. Uh, she has also proposed a sincere worker system through um, cooperation between the Owan Song Employment Center and the Industrial Management Corporation of the Ministry of Employment and Labor. And um, she has also proposed to the Ministry of Justice that Korean men meet asset standards when they marry foreigner women. So you can see from this proposal, she actually have the interest of the foreigner. And, but um, yeah, I think you reserve that applause till the end because there's still a lot more coming, right? So she have also written a um, proposal to change the visa policy to help improve the employment of international students living in Korea to the Ministry of Justice. That is the new D10 visa in 2017. So that means the D10 visa we have um, 2017 is courtesy of the proposal she wrote. And also, she has um, filed an objection to the restriction of students from non-native countries from teaching English in Korea, even though their countries use it as a first um, language. And also, she has proposed cancellation of D10 visa part-time job restrictions to the Ministry of Justice and the permission of part-time jobs for delivery and um, carriage. So, um, and um, this particular one, um, I think I resonate well with this, right? Yeah, so possibly in um, January 2023, this will be allowed because this is a proposal that was written in 2022. And um, I would um, personally, before I conclude in terms of our citation, I personally have to say thank you to her for our, our efforts. And considering the fact that um, within the last 3.6 years of being in Korea, I've transitioned within three visas. So I know exactly what it is and I can feel the impact of what she has made. Yeah. So thank you so much for your hard work. Yeah, so it's really not easy um, transitioning from D2 to D4 to D10 to D4 to D wherever. So it's actually um, will have been more stressful without some of this, your policies. And we are hoping that you're going to write more proposals and more of these policies are going to um, be in, um, enacted into law. And then to ensure that we, the foreigners, have um, a smooth um, transitioning and also possible um, integration with the system. So we say thank you very much for your work you've done. And she has um, a thesis and research around public planning research and also research service for employment. So that is a brief about um, our speaker. Uh, if you permit me, I will, uh, I will love to continue, but I don't want you to permit me, right? So we can invite her because I'm eager to listen to her. So um, Ms. Biali, the floor is yours, ma. You're welcome. Hello, guys. Uh, he, he introduced me, introduced me very, very. I'm seems like I felt giant, but actually I'm nothing. I'm just uh, your friends, and my English is very poor, so I need to translate. Yes, uh, Haruna. He is my best friend, so he can uh, translate, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. My name is uh, Haruna uh, Mohammed Hamza, and uh, currently I'm studying aerospace MSc degree at uh, KAIST in Daejeon. And uh, I've known uh, Bia here for uh, a long time now, uh, about five years. So I'll more be, a, yeah, more than five years, and I'll be a translator today. Thank you. Uh, so uh, just as stated earlier, the D10 visa was, just to correct it, was actually uh, enacted into law in 2016. So the main reason for starting this work is actually motivated by the fact that a lot of foreign students graduate and are unable to, you know, stay for even their graduation because they have to leave the country right after they graduate. 그래서 어 한국의 법무부에다가 건의를 했었고 그래서 만들어진 게 D10 비자입니다. D10 비자는 원래 있었는데 그 전에는 누가 이 비자를 쓸지 정해지지 않았기 때문에 어 다행히 제가 제안한 걸 법무부가 좋게 받아들여서 이 비자가 여러분들한테 돌아간 겁니다. So in order to solve this problem, she uh, proposed a D10 visa, but prior to that, there was an idea about the D10 visa, but there was no specification as to who would benefit from it. So the uh, proposal was to make it, you know, much more 
precise. 네, D D D 비자는 공부를 하는 비자이고요. 어, 여기에는 전문 학사부터 시작해서 대학원 박사까지 모든 비자가 지금 보시는 표처럼 나뉘어져 있습니다. So as you can see from the uh, slide, uh, the D code visa is generally for study. So from the first one, D to one, you can see to the last one, they are all from for different levels of education in Korea. 네, D3 같은 경우는 이제 연수자라고 해서 어, 연수자가 잘 뭔지 알죠? 기술 연수, 아, 그런 거, 인턴십 같은 그런 어, 연수. 그런데 이거는 어, 공공기관 장에 추천이 있어야지만 들어올 수 있는 비자입니다. So for the D3 visa, it is actually for fellowships, like for a research fellowship, for instance, and you need a special recommendation from an institute or a technological research institute in order to get this visa. So it is technologically inclined visa. 네, 그리고 여러분들이 가지고 계신 비자 중에 D4라고 있습니다. 이거는 보편적으로 연수를 하는 건데요. 어, 최근에 K-POP 문화 때문에 한식 조리 연수생이 D4-5로 나오기도 했습니다만 어, 이거는 단순히 연수만 하는 비자입니다. So the, the next one is the D4 code visa and this one is generally uh, meant for a short term you know, study, for example, language study. And recently, there is also what they call D45 that was introduced for uh, people who would like to come to Korea for uh, cultural events like K-pop and you know other Korean uh, cultural you know short-term study. D4A라는 비자가 있는데 이거는 불법 체류자 학생들 아이들이 공부를 할수 있도록 만든 비자인데 아직 법무 정식으로 인정을 한 비자는 아닙니다. So you can see on the red uh, 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 characters that is the D48 that was introduced for the dependents of illegal immigrants. So the dependents like children of illegal immigrants can have the right to study in Korea. So this visa was introduced uh, but it has not yet been uh, put into action. 그리고 여러분들이 이제 만나시게 되는 학교를 졸업하고 만나시는 비자가 D10 비자입니다. And so uh, the general visa that we've been talking about since morning is the D10 visa, which all of you are much more aware of. 네, D10 비자는 여러분들이 대학을 졸업을 하시게 되면 첫 번째 6개월은 거의 공짜이다시피 그냥 여러분들한테 드릴 겁니다. So for the D10 visa, as you all know, as soon as you graduate, you can almost for free change your uh, study visa to the D10 visa for free, and you can live for a period of uh, a few months. D10 visa는 총 2년을 있는데 6개월마다 여러분들께서 연장을 하셔야 됩니다. So the D10 visa is totally valid for two years in the space of six six months. So you have to extend it four times, uh, six months uh, interval each. 아, 아까도 얘기했지만 원래 D10 비자는 아르바이트를 할 수가 없었습니다. So initially you cannot do any part-time job on the D10 visa. 어, 그런데 작년 11월 말에 법무부 직원이랑 얘기를 해서 D10 비자를 아르바이트를 공식적으로 아르바이트를 할수 있게 해 달라고 했고 어, 우리가 많이 하고 있는 택배도 포함시켜 달라고 해서 올해 1월 1일부터 아르바이트를 근로 계약서를 작성하시고 어, 출입국에 허가를 받으시면 공식적으로 하실 수 있습니다. 택배까지 포함됩니다. So at the end of last year, December last year, there was uh, also a push and proposal to the Ministry of Justice to actually permit part-time job even on the D10 visa. So from this year, uh, January this year, uh, it was actually approved. And right now you can, if you submit an application to the uh, immigration, you can do all, kind of, all kinds of part-time job, including actually factory work. 하지만 건설 현장에서 일하는 거는 안 됩니다. Uh, but you it is limited that uh, you cannot you know do part-time jobs that include you know construction works. 아, 그래서 여러분들께서 공사장에서 일을 하시다가 잡히면 벌금을 막, 어, 받게 될 겁니다. So you can do any uh, work including tech pay but for construction sites uh, if you are caught doing it you might have to pay some penalty. 아, 나중에 다시 설명하겠지만 한국에서는 외국인들이 추, 음, 본국으로 돌아가야 하는 기준이 어, 미니멈이 300만 원의 벌금을 물면 
한국에서 강제 퇴거 나가야지 되는 겁니다. So uh, just like uh, she's going to explain later on, but you uh, just to give you a brief distance, if you get a penalty that is more than uh, 3 million won, you might have to, you know, you might be deported. 어, 그리고 금액과 상관없이 세 번의 범죄 행위가 걸리면 본국으로 돌아가야 됩니다. And also it, it doesn't matter how much penalty you got if it's consistent for like three times if uh, you are a three time offender you might also have to uh, leave. 저 so, 여러분들이 쉽게 생각하는 운, 어, 운전을 할때 어, 운전을 할때 쉽게 생각하는 모든 벌금 이런 부분들도 여러분들이 취업을 할 때는 굉장히 안 좋게 작용을 할 겁니다. So let's take a, a very uh, simple example. For example, you're driving and you got some simple, like let's say ticket or speed ticket. You know, those simple, simple uh, penalties, later on when you try to get a formal job or uh, an official job, it might add up as a negative, you know, point towards your employment. 자, 그 이제 디테일까지가 끝나고 나면 여러분들이 알고 싶어하는 E7 만약 한국에서 직업을 갖게 되면 여러분들이 갖게 되는 비자는 E7 비자부터 시작을 할 겁니다. So after E D10 visa, if you are able to secure a job, uh, one of the most common visa you might transition to is the E7 visa, which is a work visa. 네. E7 비자로 여러분들이 3년간 만 3년간을 일하시게 되면 F27을 받게 될 겁니다. So after being on the E7 visa for three years, you will qualify to change to F27 visa. 어, F27 비자는 어, 여러분들께서 F5 영주권으로 갈수 있는 좋은 비자입니다. So the F27 visa, you can see it as a transition to the F5 F5 visa, which is the permanent resident visa. 예전에는 외국인 유학생들이 한국에서 거주를 하고 직업을 갖게 되면 어, 직업을 갖는 사례가 별로 없었어요. 그러다 이제 직업을 가질 수 있게 되었고 E7 비자로 가서 F27으로 가는데 예전에는 한국어 시험을 봤습니다. 그래서 그 시험을 통과해야지만 비자를 줬었습니다. So for the F27 and the whole visa system was a little bit more difficult in, in the past and it wasn't easy for a foreign students to get a job in Korea. But now that things have become much more easier, you can transition from D10 visa to F27 and from the F27 to the F2, uh, F5, which is a permanent residence. And also before, prior to that, you, you needed to take the topic test, which is a to um, test of proficiency in Korean which determines if you'll be given the F2 visa, but now you no longer need to take the test to get the visa. Uh, 예전에 그 제가 또 법무부 직원을 만나서 얘기를 했었을 때 한국에서 석사랑 박사 과정을 영어로만 공부하는 친구들은 그 수업을 따라가기도 조차 힘들어서 한국어를 배울 시간이 없다. 그러기 때문에 어, 석사나 박사 과정이 통과된 애들은 친구들은 어, 직업을 갖게 된다면 비자를 좀 쉽게 줬으면 좋겠다라고 얘기를 해서 E7도 쉽게 갈수 있고 F27도 쉽게 갈수 있습니다. So in the past because of this uh, you know language issue she uh, met with one of the staff from the Ministry of Justice and had this you know meeting that actually led to this. So they concluded that you know some people who study masters and PhD here studied only in English and as at that having Korean you know, language score as a requirement for providing visa for even the E7 doesn't make sense. So because of that, it was changed and you can now have the E7 visa and even transition to F27 without the Korean test score. 아, 그래서 조금 이따가 다시 보여드리겠지만은 지금 표시해드린 게 점수제 이민제라는 표시로 여러분들의 점수를 포함을 해서 어, 그렇게 해서 비자를 변경을 하실 수도 있습니다. Just like uh, she's going to explain later on in the presentation, but what you've seen now on the screen is actually the points-based system where you gather some points which will qualify you to get the visa. 네, 여기에서 보시면은. 음, F5-9 표시를 해줄게요. 여기까지. 그리고 F5-9과 F5-10 비자 그리고 F5-15이 여러분들을 위한 비자입니다. Okay, so the F9 visa you can see on the screen F9, F10 and also F15. Mm. It's uh, the visa that is meant for all of you. F5-9 is 한국에서 처음, 아, 해외에서 
한국이 아니라 해외에서 첨단 산업 분야 하루나 같은 전공을 졸업을 하게 되면 신청을 할수 있는 비자입니다. So for the F9 visa, if you graduated from uh, an engineering related course from a foreign university uh, or related um, courses relating to science and technology, you can also apply for this visa. 그리고 F2-5-10은 첨단 산업 분야를 한국에서 학사, 석사까지 어, 공부를 한 사람들이 한국에 취업했을 때 받을 수 있는 비자입니다. And for the F5-10 is also similar, but is for people who graduated from science and engineering related courses in uh, from a university in Korea. So the first one, F5-9, is for if you graduated outside, and the second one, if you graduated in Korea. 그리고 F5-15 는 한국에서 박사 과정을 마친 사람들이 학위를 받은 사람들이 한국에 취업했을 때 받을 수 있는 비자입니다. And the F5-15 is only for people who graduated uh, PhD from a university in Korea. 그래서 원래대로 하면 여러분들은 학, 한국에서 학교의 모든 학사, 석사, 박사 과정을 마치고 E7 비자를 한 다음에 E7 비자를 만 3년 후에 F27으로 가서 F27에 만 3년이 지나면 F5를 어플라이 할수 있는 겁니다. So initially uh, there is a step and the step is that if you graduate master's or PhD from a Korean university you change to E7 visa which is a work visa you stay on the visa for three years and you can change to F27 visa you stay on the F27 visa for another three years then you can change to F5 visa which is the permanent residence visa. 그런데 최근에 어, 지금 윤, 윤석열 정권에서는 우리 그 외국인 유학생들과 굉장히 좋은 관계를 유지하려고 노력을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 어, 이렇게 F5로 가는 비자에서 박사 과정까지 마치게 되면은 한국어 시험을 통과하지 않아도 됩니다. So, uh, but all the process has, is long and then the new president in an effort to maintain a good relationship with uh, the international community in Korea has, you know, made the process a, a much more easier one. So now when you graduate, you, it's very possible to get the F2 you know, visa directly. And then also there is no need for Korean language test score. Uh, F5 비자가 뭔지 모르시는 분들을 위해서 설명을 드릴게요. F5는 영주권이라고 해서 10년 동안 여러분들이 비자 변경 없이 그 비자로 한국에서 거의 한국 사람과 대등하게 똑같게 어, 받을 수 있는 처우를 이야기합니다. So in order to explain in detail what the F5 visa means, the F5 visa is the permanent residence, uh, which means you can be on that visa for 10 straight years without having to visit the immigration to extend or to change any visa and also you have the equal rights of a korean 그리고 나서 이제 여러분들한테 말씀드릴 수 있는 게 혹시 한국에서 가족들을 같이 지내시는 분들은 와이프 드릴 경우에는 F3 비자를 받습니다. And uh, for those of uh, you here who have you know dependents in korea like family wives uh, or children uh, this family, they can also uh, be on the F3 visa, which is literally a dependent visa. Uh, D1 부터 시작해서 D10, E1 부터 시작해서 E7 까지의 So, uh, every person who is between uh, the uh, D1 to D10 visa, the E1 to uh, the last E, a series visa, all the person's dependents can uh, be given the F3 visa. 자, 여러분들께서 이렇게 비자를 변경하실 때 최근 어, 바뀐 점이 있습니다. 많이 아까 이야기한 점수제로 갈 경우에는 여러 가지 표들이 있습니다. 제가 그거를 오늘 다운받지는 못했습니다만 그 표에 의거하면 여러분들의 나이, 학력, 그리고 한국에 거주한 기간 등이 나올 겁니다. So uh, there is uh, usually, just like she mentioned about the point-based system, uh, she was unable to bring the table today. But one thing you should know that is involved in the point-based system is that your age, your uh, level of education, and um, uh, other you know factors like you know what kind of work you do, how much you earn, actually contribute to the point-based system. 
그리고 여러분들이 비자를 받을 때 예전에는 월급이 한국 사람들보다 훨씬 많아야지만 비자를 변경해 줬는데 그것 또한 지금 한국 사람들과 동일할 경우에는 거의 비슷할 경우에는 비자 변경을 굉장히 쉽게 해주고 있습니다. So initially, like uh, for the point-based system, in terms of your revenue, your uh, yearly income, it has to be higher than a Korean to actually get the uh, full points uh, for the um, income-based you know, system. But as of now, even if you earn the same as a Korean, uh, you can actually qualify for uh, the point-based system. 자, 이, 이 자료들은 여러분들이 E7으로 비자를 변경할 때 소득금액 신고서라고 되어 있습니다. 그래서 여기 보면 은 많은 직업들에 관련돼서 체크를 하시고 어, 여기에서 본인의 소득과 관련돼서 서류를 제출하는데 이거는 회사에서 진행을 도와줄 겁니다. So this uh, document that she's actually scrolling through is for those people who have changed to D10 and are now looking forward to change to E7 after, you know, uh, gotten a job. So this one usually uh, will be the company where you got employed at will usually help you to fill this form, which includes how much they're going to be pay, paying you every year and also um, everything that includes uh, the job description. 자, 여기 아까 말씀드렸던 벌금에 관한 겁니다. 어, 범칙금이 있고 과태료가 있습니다. 그런데 어, 두개다 동일하게 생각을 하셔야지 될 거고요. 한개 사건으로 500만 원 이상의 범칙금을 받거나 5년 이내 700만 원 이상 혹은 3회 이상일 경우는 아까 출국 조치가 된다고 제가 말씀을 드렸습니다. So now uh, she's going to explain in detail the uh... You know, a crime and penalty. You know, uh, 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 slide. So the first one is there's a difference between you know penalty you pay and also you know legal fees. So if the total of all uh, penalty incurred legally, like uh, let's say you are involved in a crime or something, is actually more than five million one. Sorry, um, seven million one within five years, then you will have to be deported. 네, 그리고 벌금 같은 경우는 한 사건에 300만 원 이상, 그리고 5년 이내 500만 원 이상이거나 3회일 경우에는 무조건 출국됩니다. So, and the, the next one is that per case, if you are charged with more than 3 million won per case, that you're involved in uh, a car accident where you cause the problem case. Imagine that maybe from drunk driving, for instance, and your penalty is 3 million, more than 3 million won. In this case, you will be deported uh, because one case you were charged more than 3 million won. And in total, if the penalty you've been charged three times consecutively, you will also face uh, deportation. 최근에 어떤 외국인이 술 마시고 음주운전 사고를 냈는데 벌금이 700만 원 나와서 바로 추방이 됐습니다. 강제 퇴고됐습니다. So uh, recently there was a foreign national who was involved in a drunk driving, you know, case, and his penalty was 7 million won due to that case, and he was actually forced to leave right away. 네, 이거는 모든 비자에 상관없이 동일하게 적용되는 겁니다. So this one doesn't matter what kind of visa you have. Is actually applies to everyone. 아 그리고 여러분들께서 지금부터 변경된 건에 대해서 말씀을 드리겠습니다. 비자를 변경을 하실 때 여러분들의 어, 출입국에 가셨을 때 6개월치의 은행 그 거래 내역서를 제출하게 됩니다. So uh, for changing the visa, in most cases, you are asked to go to the bank to get your bank statement uh, to uh, show the immigration during uh, your visa change. 여러분들이 D10 비자로 바뀌었을 때 처음에는 제가 거의 공짜이다시피 주지만은 두 번째부터는 여러분들께서 그 은행 거래 내역서를 제출하셔야 되는데 첫째, 두 번째로 비, D10 비자 변경을 할 때는 어, 통장 잔고가 500만 원이 있어야지 됩니다. So uh, let's take for instance the D10 visa. When you graduate and you're changing to the D10 visa, the first time is actually free. You don't have to submit your uh, bank statement. But from the second time, if you go to extend, you need to provide your bank statement for a period of uh, some months. And that would be used to actually change, extend your visa. And the amount is sometimes or 
uh, it's usually around 5 million won. You need to have in your bank account to extend. Six, Could it go? Sorry, oh. 6 million won. 6 million? Recently. Yeah, it's now 6 million. Now 6 million. 5 or 6. <목소리> 자 여러분들께서 이후에 또 중요한 거는 적금을 어, 납입을 하셔야지 됩니다. 네, 3년간 3년간 적금을 한 부분에 대해서 포인트가 들어가고 자원봉사를 한 거에 대해서 포인트가 적용이 될 겁니다. Okay, and uh, uh, just uh, extra information. Uh, you know, for the point-based system, like some of the things you do, like bank statement, and also let's say you volunteer in Korea, you did some volunteering activities and you're able to get some hours record. That one too could add and give you advantage uh, when actually changing visa with the point-based system. Yeah, 하루 나는 포인트, 아, 자원봉사 포인트가 너무 많아서 상을 받았는데 그럴 경우에도 비자 변경치 아주 유리합니다. Okay, so she's using me as an example. Because uh, I have a lot of volunteering hours, so in that case, um, it, I, I actually use it to actually receive a mayor's award. So in that case too, it could actually be of advantage to you when you uh, change your visa. 여러분들께서 아르바이트를 하실 때 제가 아까 택배가 가능하다고 했는데 어떤 친구들은 자기가 운전을 할줄 알아서 택배 운전을 하려고 하시는데 그럴 경우는 안 됩니다. 어, 오로지 택배 회사에서만 일을 하는 게 되, 일을 하는 게 되지 운전 관련된 아르바이트는 하실 수가 없습니다. So uh, to clear also a point that she made earlier about the part-time job which you can do now. Uh, for example, she gave example with TechPay. So you can do TechPay, but there are some people who can drive, and as soon as they get to the uh, TechPay company, they want to be drivers in a TechPay company. So the driving is excluded from what you are permitted to do. You can do any other work, but being a driver for the TechBay company is not included. 여러분들께서 영어를 공용어로 쓰시기 때문에 간혹 영어 학원에 몰래 아르바이트를 하시는 경우가 많이 있는데 이것 또한 불법입니다. So uh, a lot of um, us here, because our country, our official language is English, and we can speak English well, we resort to working for uh, English academies and all that uh, in secret. But uh, legally, we are not allowed because our country is not included in the official, you know, countries under law that can teach English. So you should have it at the back of your mind. 그래서 제가 이거를 한국 정부에다 민원을 넣은 적이 있었습니다. 어, 그 영어를 공용어로 사용하는 국가에서 왜 영어를 가르치지 못하냐? 그래서 한국 정부가 대안을 제시를 한 거는. 토솔이나 그 밖에 여러 가지의 자격증이 있습니다. 그 자격에 준할 경우에는 어, 영어를 가르칠 수 있습니다. So uh, because of this actually she has um, participated in um, dropping a proposal also on a complaint to the ministry about this issue and the reply they got was that you know even though it's a official you know English speaking country it is a process that will have to involve, you know, the government, and also uh, individually you can teach if you are able to, you know, get some specific certifications. For example, English teaching a uh, teacher certification or something you can teach individually. 그러나 그것도 무조건 출입국의 허락을 받아야 합니다. So even in that case, you also have to pass through the normal process of reporting to the immigration first. 그리고 죄송합니다. 제가 아 요거 이게 외국인 유학생 시간제 취업 확인서라고 되어 있습니다. 여기에 보면 여러분들이 작성을 하시고요. 취업 예정 근무지 여기에는 고용주가 하는데 이 서류를 가지고 출입국에 갔는데 어떤 경우가 있냐 그러면 내일부터 아르바이트를 시작하는데 오늘 출입국에 가서 허락을 받으면 안 해줍니다. 그래서 최소한 일주일 후에 거를 일주일 전에 가서 
취업 허락을 받고서 여러분들이 아르바이트를 하셔야 됩니다. So regarding the part-time job, uh, this document you can see on the screen is uh, actually what you use to apply for a part-time job. Uh, a lot of mistakes, uh, a mistake like a lot of people make is that if the part-time job is starting, for instance, tomorrow, they go today to the immigration to report and get permission. In that case, they usually deny uh, the visa. But if you have a part-time job starting like this uh, tomorrow, for instance, you have to at least apply a week before or some weeks prior to that date so that you can actually be uh, permitted. 예, 그리고 학교의 담당자, 유학생 담당자한테도 사전에 허락을 받아야 합니다. And also uh, for the students, you need to also get permission from uh, your school, the person in charge of international student in your school. 아, 또한 여러분들께서 유학생들께서 잠깐만요. 자료를 넘기다가 죄송합니다. 잠깐만요. 아, 요, 요 부분들을 설명을 드려야지 될 겁니다. 졸업 유권을, 졸업 기한이 다 된데도 졸업하지 못하신 분들에 한해서는 특별히 연장을 요 기간에 해주는데, 요때 몰래바이트를 하다 걸리면 바로, 어, 본국으로 가셔야 됩니다. Okay, uh, there is also an important, yes, there is also an important, uh, uh, you know, point here, which you can see here. Uh, there are a lot of situations where, for example, your period of study is two years and you are unable to complete it in two years and you have to extend by one semester. In that case, it is very possible to extend your visa, which in that case could be D2 visa. And if extended and you are working or you are doing any part-time job within that extended period, usually uh, it will lead to a uh, possibility of deportation. So you can see here in the, um, the, uh, the three different points here. So the first one is basically associate degree. So if you are admitted for an associate degree, uh, which is a maximum of three years, and you can, it can be extended to a maximum of four years. So it means if you're unable to graduate for uh, an associate degree within three years, the maximum time you can, uh, your visa will be extended will be one year, making it four years. And for bachelor's degree, uh, it can be extended for as uh, a period of seven years. So bachelor's degree, depending on if it's engineering or medicine, can range up to six years. So if you're unable to graduate within six years, if in, in the case of medicine, to be extended to, it will be extended to six years. And for PhD, it is eight years. And if you're unable to graduate, two extra years will be given uh, to you. 네, 여러분들께서 이 기한을 모르시고 나서 갑자기 어 본인이 논문 통과가 되지 않았는데 어저 어떻게요 어떻게요 그러고 저한테 도움 요청하시는 분들이 많아서 설명드렸습니다. 여러분들이 기한 내에 모든 공부를 잘 맞추시면 좋겠습니다. So, uh, because there are a lot of people who make inquiries about, you know, this particular system, and that's why she's explaining it. Uh, she thinks that as long as or oh, as um, as much as possible, as much as you can, try to finish your study within this st uh, stipulated period of time to avoid any of these uh, complications. 네, 최근에 그 유학생들이 어떻게든 뭐 아르바이트 하는 거는 저도 잘 알고 있습니다. 그게 꼭 필요하다는 것도 잘 알고 있습니다. 그래서 되도록이면 좋은 방향으로 가려고 제가 경기도 어, 경기도에서 요청한 경기도 외국인들 실태 조사 그리고 이제 며칠 전에 끝난 충청남도 외국인 실태 조사를 해서 그두 도에다가 건의를 했습니다. 외국인 유학생 취업 지원 센터를 설립하라고 요청을 했고 충청남도는 지금 그걸 받아들여서 그거에 관련된 연구를 지속적으로 하고 있습니다. So uh, she is very much aware of all this because um, almost all her career she has just worked uh, for and with um, foreign nationals, you know, to improve the welfare and everyone, uh, for everyone here. So the recent effort they are making is in the Gyeonggi province area and also the Chungcheong area where they took a survey on, you know, uh, the job opportunities and uh, how they could improve uh, those opportunities for foreign nationals. And for the Chungcheong province, they have been able to receive this, the results of this survey positively. 
and they are looking forward to establishing a foreigner employment center that would you know help foster foreign employment here. 최근에 어, 경상도에서 F2R이라는 비자를 만들었습니다. And uh, recently there was in uh, Gyeongsang area there is a visa code called F2R that was introduced. 예, 그 F2R에 대해서 정확한 지침이 나와 있는 거는 아닙니다만 이거는 경상도에서 대학을 졸업한 사람들이 경상도에 있는 기업에 혹은 농업에 취업을 할 경우에 주는 특별 비자입니다. So uh, the details of that one too is still pending, but uh, if she's to give you a just a rundown of what that visa means is that uh, any international student who graduated from Gyeongsang uh, do area the, and gets employed in a company within that area, he will be given that visa. So you know the F2 visa code is literally short-term residence. So it means that you have a residence visa. 어 이거에 관련된 자세한 내용이 나오면 제가 여러분들한테 알려드릴 건데요. 간혹 행정사라는 분들이 이거 관련해서 어, 내가 비자 바꿔줄 테니까 나한테 돈 주고서 이거 해 그랬을 때는 되도록이면 제가 공식적으로 법무부에서 오케이가 떨어지지 않으면은 안 하시는 게 좋습니다. So uh, as soon as the details of that comes, she's going to uh, communicate it with uh, all of us. Uh, but in the meantime. There could be people who might approach you and saying, you know, you should give them some money so they could, you know, help you foster, you know, the uh, process of your visa application. As far as it is not from the Ministry of uh, Justice or from the Immigration Department, please uh, try to avoid those kind of people. Han Yi Isam Yanjone, Oton Hengongsaga, Pomobu is a horak to Haji Aningorega Jugosa, Wegu Gindrande, Iron Pizaga Ite Rago Monjo Kumpu Heso, Kusarami Kunga Manan Tunur Badan, the Pomobu is a Kupiza Palpuja and Asosmida. So uh these people could even be officials from the government and there was an incident in the past where an official actually came and gave a false uh presentation about a new visa that was enacted. And because of that, he was uh, he got a lot of applicants who gave so much money to uh, get that visa. But at the, at the end, it was discovered that the visa code he had actually even presented was not even uh, in consideration at the Ministry of Justice. 그래서 제가 그거 관련돼서 제가 법무부에다 민원을 넣었고 법무부는 그럴 일이 없다라고 얘기하니 여러분들의 소중한 눈을 잘 지키시기를 바라겠습니다. So um, after you know uh, a lot of you know um, conversation with the Ministry of Justice, they were able to you know block it. So she really recommends that we should all be vigilant uh, against those kind of things. 여러분들이 점수제로 비자를 F27으로 변경할 때 가장 좋은 그냥 거의 주다시피 하는 포인트가 있습니다. 그게 어떤 포인트냐 하면 자원봉사 아까도 얘기했듯이 자원봉사 포인트가 7 포인트가 되고요. 그 다음에 은행에 3년간 적금을 넣은 포인트가 5 포인트에서 10 포인트로 갈 겁니다만 아마도 아직 확실하지는 않습니다만 이 부분이 점점 더 확대될 겁니다. So uh, just give a highlight again on the two points she has just remembered in the point-based system. Just like she mentioned, the volunteering uh, activities, if you do volunteering activities, you could actually harness up to seven points. And also, there is also one point. If you save money in the bank for uh, about three years, which is like um, monthly installments, let's say you create an account, savings account, and uh, 10,000 won is going out for your savings every month for a period of three years. That also will give you uh, a lot of advantage and points. <laughs> okay, Manon is too small, but <laughs> 10,000 is too small. But... <laughs> 자, 이거 왜 하는 거냐, 그러면? <laughs> 자, 여러분들 나가서 밥사 먹어도 만 원이에요. 자, 이거 왜 하냐 하면 한국 정부는 어, 이거를 체크하는 이유가 여러분들이 여기서 계속 살 사람인지 아닌지를 판가름하는 그 분별력의 기준이 될 겁니다. So, uh, the reason for checking all these things is that in order to give you this permanent residence visa, the, the immigration officer wants to as much as possible try to uh, predict if you are the kind of person who wants to keep living here or you're going to like leave and you know just jack by in the next you know uh, few <laughs> in the next few years. 자 여러분들께서 한국에 그러니까 여기서 
장학금을 받고 물론 본국에 있는 가족들을 잘 돌봐줘야 하지만 여기서 받고 있는 장학금의 일부분 어, 아까 만원 너무 적다 했죠 최소한 10만 원은 돼야 됩니다 그리고 여러분들이 많이 직업을 갖게 되더라도 그 부분에 있어서 적금을 하게 되면 이 사람은 한국에서 계속 살 사람이라고 판단하는 중요한 가치인데 이거 자꾸 잊어버리시고 안 하십니다 그러다가 어떤 얘기를 하냐 그러면 갑자기 친구들한테 돈을 다 빌려요 돈을 다 빌려서 자기 통장에 집어넣고 어, 법무부에다 제출하고 비자 연장할 때 법무부에다 제출하고 그러 나서 비자 받으면 다시 다 빼서 친구들한테 줍니다. 이거 이제는 적용 안 되는 겁니다. So um, she understands that we are all here um, um, trying to uh, make ends meet, study and also support our family back home. But we should also, you know, remember that uh, savings, saving a uh, little money, um, let's say 100,000 per month here in a Korean bank account is also useful because One of the requirements they check at the immigration is, like I said, the possibility of this person staying a long time or living. Uh, and there has been cases that has been working for a long time, which uh, a lot of us have no money in our account. And when it's time to extend our visa, we just gather money from people, friends, and put it in the account. And then as soon as we submit, then we return back the money. It used to work before, but now that thing is already, you know, uh, it has cast, you know? So, um, The immigration are now aware of that system and they try to look at your history of you know has this person been saving and all that so she's trying to say that uh it would be advisable to build this saving culture even if it's hundred thousand a month your saving in your korean bank account here is going to actually help you with that step 네 그리고 혹시라도 어, 제 발표 시간이 다 돼서 이제 마치려고 하는데요 혹시라도 도움이 필요한 사람이 있으면 저한테 언제든지 연락을 해주시면 됩니다 어, 제 전화는 24시간 열려 있는데 어, 저한테 오실 때는 거짓말을 하거나 본인이 잘못한 걸 숨기거나 그럴 경우 저는 도와주지 않습니다 어, Okay, so as she's rounding up, as her time is, is up, she would like to say that if you have any problem anytime, any day, her phone is open 24 hours, please uh, reach out to her. Uh, but she has just um, a condition, and that is if you're coming to her with any problem, please don't lie about the problem. Don't hide anything, be honest and be sincere. Um, and if you're at fault, you know, just be honest with her and say it. That way she will know Uh, the best way to help you. Personally, I have, you know, been with her for a lot of years and I know that she is for us and not against us. So as much as possible, yeah. uh, if, if we are honest, whatever the problem is, she has a lot of network and connection within the system and she would always be ready to help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 또 질문 받겠습니다. Any, any questions? questions? Yes. Ah, l a t e Um, thank you so much. Um, g a m s a m n i d a right? Yeah, g a m s a m n i d a Yeah, thank you so much for for the insight. It's actually very insightful. And um, it's also um, detailed. So thank you very much for the insight. I know we have a lot of questions and um, we have um, already gained some clarities as regards some of the um, stuff that have been going on in terms of the immigration. And then she has also tried as much as possible to clear some kind of um, perceptions that we have as regards um, the immigration status of D10 or D2 or um, F3 that we have. So we say thank you very much. And um, I would like you to reserve your questions. If you are online, you can post your question. And um, if you are here physically, you can probably write your questions. Or if you want to answer, if you want to ask your question by um, you speaking, it's also allowed. But right now, it's not the time for us to um, take in the questions. We want to have the second speaker speak first. Then after the second speaker, then we are going to have um, um we're going to have the question and answer session and also we have a very lovely session just five minutes actually a brain teaser so if you probably get two out of the five questions right then you have a voucher um starbucks voucher right starbucks voucher right 
yeah so you're going to have a starbucks voucher so i know we all love starbucks yeah okay so is our next speaker online okay nice in the absence of that i think we could have a yeah so um we can have a brain teaser right now so it's um fastest fingers first yeah so fastest fingers simply means you don't have to read the answer up right so you tell us the answer let's see the fastest person to tell us the answer online fastest fingers you write the answer here you also tell us what the answer is so the first question are we ready oh we're not ready actually and i'm not hearing the yes are we ready okay so the first question okay they are ready all right all right first questions yeah. how many guest speakers and um i'm not finished answering the questions how many guest speakers and invited guests do we have presently Okay. <laughs> so, so presently, presently, presently. Okay. So no one actually get it right. So presently, we have just one guest speakers online, and then we have one, two, three, four, four invited guests. So making a total of five. So no one gets it right. You said five, right? Five online, so please take note of the, for all the people that said five, so take note their names. So we have more questions. No, I'm not checking, not online, presently here. So we have, okay, so let's let's do it. So we have our guest speaker, Mr. Um, Biali. We have our interpreter, Arunra. We have our advisor, we have the pioneer president, and we have um, um, from. Um, University of um, Paris sites. So there are five in total. Yeah. So the next question. So the next question. Yeah. So you take notes of the people that get it right. So the people with the maximum answers get the prize. So the next question. Which letter, which letter of the alphabet has the most water? Which letter of the alphabet has the most water? Water, yeah, water that you know. Which letter of the alphabet, alphabet has the most water? The first question, everybody was shouting 20, 30, 40, 50. Now no one is saying anything. Let's think. Which letter, which letter of the alphabet has the most water? Nope. We have 30 seconds. Drum rules. All right, let's do this. The letter is letter C. So who said C? Nobody said C here. Okay, so this is it. It's a very simple brain teaser, right? We have letter C. And if you want to spell C that has water, S-E-A is also C. So it's a letter that has the most water. So I'm surprised that we didn't really get it right. So, which letter of the alphabet has the most water? So, C and letter C, that's pronounced the same thing, right? So, the next question, the next question, the next question. Okay, yeah, so our next speaker is online. So, we ask the, the third question, then after we ask the remaining two questions, and then we'll determine our winner. So, the next question is this. What occurs once in every minute, twice in every moment, yet never in a thousand years? What occurs once in every minute, once in every minute, twice in every moment, yet never in a thousand years? All right, so the answer is M, right? So. So the answer is M. So if you look at the word minutes, you have only one M. 
And when you look at moments, you have 2M. But when you look at 1,000 years, you never see letter M in it. So the answer is actually letter M. So that's three questions. So I think our online users are actually the winners. So, But we have two more questions. We have our next speaker that is online. So, so we're going to continue with the remaining two brain teasers after this. So um, I would like to um, welcome our guest speaker and um, in the person of Dr. Musa Dan Karemi. So I would like to give us a brief um, um, biography of our uh, brief citation as regards um, our guest speaker today, um, Dr. Musa Dan Karemi, who is also the ambassador of the Busan immigration. Um, Dr. Musa Dan Karemi was born and raised in, in Nigeria Republic and then he moved to um, Kenya for his studies at um, Desert University, and he majored in the community de in community development. I actually love community development, so I'm beginning to love our guest speaker already. Yeah, so um, at Desert, he served um, in the Student um, Council as chairman of the international student and was exposed to the realities of foreign students, particularly visa-related issues. And after completing his bachelor's degree, Dr. Musa then currently moved to South Korea to pursue his master's degree in international relations at um, Pukyong National University. During this time, he served as vice president of the International um, Student Association of PKNU and chairman of the Kenyan community in Busan. After he graduated from PKNU, he worked as a project coordinator and um, translator at Hanil Heavy Industries for about three years. Following his work at Hanil, Dr. Musa Dan Karami pursued a career as a TV and radio reporter, and also an editor and a part-time university professor and um, also an actor. Oh, that's impressive. So, so um, I'm actually inspired. So in 2019, he enrolled at Pusan National University where he successfully graduated with a PhD in international business management with a research interest in the digitalization of the African agri-food global um, supply chain. And today, Dr. Asanet Dankiremi is a marketing consultant a CEO and a founder of Korika, and also an ambassador of Busan Immigration, and also I know you know what I said. That's it. No, 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 that's not. It. And also the chairman of the Busan African Union, and last the freelance um, movie actor. So, um, Dr. Musa Dan um thank you so much for joining us. Um, despite your busy schedule. I'm aware that you are actually on a business trip, but um, you still um, try to find time to actually um, give us um, your insights as regard the immigration um, system of Korea. Um, we say a very big thank you to you. And um, personally, um, we are inspired with your um, the work you've been doing and um, also the work you are going to do in the future. And um, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, you have the floor, sir. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much for having me. Hello, everybody. Can you listen to me? Can you hear my voice well? Yes, we can hear your voice, sir. All right. And I would like to share the slide. Should I control it on this side or you'll control it on your side? Yeah. Um, you can share from the side if it's more convenient. And if you want to share here, we can also do that. Oh, I think I will prefer you to share from your side. Then All right, I'll just sorry. go slide by slide. The All PPT right. we'll first. Right. All right. I'm just going to just give us a moment. So you Okay. Yeah. So as we prepare the PPT, first of all, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, I had actually planned to be in Daegu, you know, to attend this uh, symposium because I prefer more of a uh, face-to-face, which is ironical because my thesis on digitalization, but face-to-face -face always has a more added value because you can get to see me and feel my reaction. And unfortunately, I just came from, I just came back from business trip and our team is so busy as you can see i'm talking to you from the car so i apologize for that if there is any inconvenience because of noise so as they make the ppt ready today in this symposium i just want to briefly touch on korean immigration system and in the immigration system as you can see in my ppt slide i will first start by sharing my journey because i believe i need to first talk about my life you know what i've experienced so that it doesn't sound more like i'm just quoting some sources and then starting all right i think now i can start yeah all can right 
the slide now, sir? I can see it very well. I think one of you has to control it manually as yeah, we sure. move. Yeah, so, I got you, sir. So once again, thank you for having me. So my name is Dr. Dan Karami Musa. And as our speaker has already introduced me, I don't have to say much about myself. I will speak for about 10 to 15 minutes and then open the floor for Q and A's. So let's go to the next slide. So basically this is what I'm gonna talk about. First, my current experience. And then secondly, I'll talk about, but basically points two, three, four, and five are resources that are available for everybody in Korea in order to make his or her immigration journey much better. And finally, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna accept any Q and A's. Let's go to the next slide. So basically, this is my experience. I first came here actually in 2009 as an exchange student in Busan, and I spent about a year here. I loved my experience in Korea, went back to Kenya where I was doing my undergraduate, graduated, and then came back here in 2013 in March as a student at PKNU. So after finishing my, my master's degree, I was lucky that before I finished my, my master's degree, I got a job offer. And I changed my visa from that of a student visa to that of a working visa or the professional visa. At that time, they call it, they call it special designation visa. Now I think they just call it professional visa. So personally, the transition was quite smooth. And what helped me was in the company I work at Handel Heavy Industry, we had a lawyer who specialized in processing all the documents for the foreigners working in the company. So I didn't have much of an issue. So one more thing I would like to say, which I'm sure will come up in the Q&A. I heard many people say at the immigration for you to get a job, you need to get a job which is in line with what you've studied at the university. And so many foreign students say they have been denied the work visa because of that. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, that's not true. It doesn't really matter. So don't let that stop you from pursuing whatever career choice you choose to take. So irrespective of what you studied at the university, as long as the employer is willing to hire you, you can do that. You can take the job. For example, I studied international relations and my first job was that of a translator and project management. So totally different. So after the E7, I discovered this program, which I'm going to talk about called KIIP, which stands for the Korea Immigration Integration Program. I did it. And then I moved to the F2 visa, which is the long-term resident visa. Now they just call it resident visa. Then after that, I got five years under that visa. So within five years, I was privileged to have found the love of my life. And I told me that I married a Korean. So after I married a Korean, I went back to the immigration to extend my F2 visa. Then the officer who was already my friend told me, Musa, why are you extending the F2 yet you can easily go for an F6? Because I have the same privileges and F6 even gives me more. For example, I have access to government services, which F2 doesn't really give me. So upon the advice of the immigration officer, which was unbelievable, I changed to F6. Now, after I changed to F6, by this time, I was already the ambassador of the Busan immigration. After I changed, then they told me, Musa, what are you waiting? Why are you living here as a foreigner? Why not change to become a citizen completely? So as we speak, I am a Korean citizen. So my whole journey took about 10 years. Thank you so much. My journey took about 10 years to become a Korean citizen. And it was very smooth. And today I'm going to share basically my experience and also backed with facts or realities of the immigration. All right. So on the citizenship part, which I am right now, there is also one misconception people have that you cannot be a Korean citizen and retain your citizenship of origin. That's not true. You can be a dual citizen. As you speak, I'm a dual citizen, fully, legally. So there's a trick to that though. People who do not know about this system, when they apply for citizenship, they renounce their citizenship of origin. You don't have to do it, okay? And unfortunately, you'll meet some experts 
or consultants who will tell that you have to renounce your citizenship of origin. That is not true. Okay, you can keep both as long as your country of origin allows dual citizenship. I'm sure Nigeria allows dual citizenship, if I'm not wrong. Nigeria allows dual citizenship. So for most of my viewers here who are Nigerians, if you're in Korea and you're interested, you can actually obtain both citizenships. Please, let's go to the next slide. So the bulk of my presentation is actually can be summarized in this website. This is the High Korea website. And I'm sure all of you or most of you must be familiar with this site. And if you're not, you should take a good look at it. It's High Korea. That's where almost all the information you need, immigration related and visa related, are located. And what I like the most about this site is simply because of the news updates. Whatever is new, they let you know. So time to time, I always advise people, once in a month, just log in and see what's new. Because you might find something that may benefit you, or some rules will also have changed. All right? And the most important thing for me, what I'll recommend for people, on this website, remember, any time to go to the immigration, you actually have to book an appointment. And this is where and you come to the appointment. Come. All right? All right. So, so let's move to the next slide. slide. So remember, I talked about the High Korea website. And also, this is another website I would like to just let you know. But it's not really a must. But just for your information, this is the Ministry of Justice website. And I hope you know that the Korean immigration is under the Ministry of Justice. Yes, it's under the Ministry of Justice. That is why it is now a little bit more complicated to deal with the immigration. Why? Because they represent the law. You can go there and they can tell you no, and it's a no. There's nothing you can do about it. That's one of the, I don't want to call it sad realities, but these are the realities. So the Ministry of Justice is on regulating the immigration and we are actually working together. All right, so on this site, you can also find more information. Okay, let me not say more information, but you can find some additional information about immigration related issues and in good English. So I also recommend this site for you guys, for your just for your perusal, okay? But then the High Korea is a top priority, the previous site. Now let's move to the next slide, please. On this slide, I know I, I received many questions about visa. These are just some visa categories. There are absolutely many types of visas available and every visa has its own requirement. So when people ask me about specific visa and specific documents, I don't deal with that. You know, visa office is completely different and there are staff that are in charge of that. So just for your information, I put this slide to just show you the different categories available. Now later, I'm going to tell you how you can find details about each and every visa. Let's move to the next slide, please. This is my most important slide in today's symposium. In fact, if you haven't listened to anything that I have said today, please grab a copy of this slide. And actually, it's a PDF book that I have shared with your chairman that I would like him to share with everybody in this room, in this chat room, basically, and all the people interested in visa-related issues. This book called The Visa Navigator is the most recent updated information on all visa issues here. It's, I think, if I'm not wrong, this book has been released or this edition has been released this year in May. Okay, and if you see on the right, the first point talks about the visa overview and it talks about the different types of visa. Now, this book even tells you what are the steps you need to move from a D2 visa to an F5 visa. It also talks about the job opportunities, talk about your obligations. For example, if you change houses, within how many days you need to report to the immigration? You know, if you lose your ID card, how should you go about it? So this is the most important document that I would like to share with everybody. And I'm sure most of the questions you will ask me will come from here, actually. I'm certain. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. So I know most of us here, who have visa-related questions might be students and might be interested in working, all right? So I want to introduce this program called the OASIS program. 
I don't know if you're familiar with it, but this is a program for business people, for startups, for entrepreneurs. As a student, you can still do this program, but if you have any, like usually tech-related ideas that can be implemented in Korea, and with that, after you graduate, you can apply for the D8 visa. Now the D8 visa is basically the investment visa or the startup visa. With that, you can literally run your business. And the good thing about this program is that it teaches you how to create the business, how to go with your, uh, how can I say, with the patents, literally everything. And it gives you points that you can apply for your D8 visa. So for business related people. Next slide, please. Now, this program is what I personally did, I think about seven years ago. At that time when I did it, I was just interested in just learning Korean language. That's it, I didn't have any motivation actually. I just did it for the sake of doing it. Little did I know that this program has lots of benefits. For example, when I applied for my naturalization, I got it within six months, which is unheard of. Usually, even though you qualify and apply, it takes about two years to even get the approval for you becoming a citizen. But for me, I got it in six months, partly because I did this program. Lastly, uh, in addition to that, or in naturalization, you need to actually also do like the Korean language exam, you know, Korean proficiency exam. There is a test about that. Imagine all that I was exempted. I didn't do any test. I mean, I just submitted my documents and six months later, I got my citizenship. That easy. And as you can see in the benefits of KIP program, I mentioned A, point A and point B. These are additional benefits that come with doing this program, especially for people who are planning to live long term in Korea. All right. So let's move to the next slide, please. So this is the last thing I'd like to share with the team. So the Korean immigration is, uh, in my opinion, I will say a little bit different from other countries, especially I've been to many African countries and they are friendly and they are open, all right? They have lots of fun activities. Usually you will find the activities on the websites or the schools will actually have activities. So what I would like to strongly encourage each and every one of us is to participate in immigration related activities. As you can see in these pictures, we, the staff, like Busan immigration staff, went to a particular school and we just played with the kids playing with stand and having barbecue and we organize even tours and lots of events so whenever i share with my friends here in busan specifically many of them don't show up i guess they're too busy doing other things or they are afraid of the immigration but you don't have to be you know by interacting with them you see the gentleman on the top picture on the left with the glasses, jeans, and then a coat. He's my boss. And he's a very good man. Today, he wanted to come to this particular meeting, but he couldn't make it because he's in Japan for another business trip. So next time you have an event, you can even invite us. And trust me, if there, if especially him, if he's available, he'll definitely be there. So think about the immigration as people who are there to make your stay in Korea pleasant. And we are here to serve everybody. My role is that of an ambassador. So I speak a lot and I represent the Busan immigration in many forums. That's why you see me moving a lot. And that's why I'm here today. So it also means when you have any issue, feel free to let me know, especially when it's a case that is complicated. Let's say you apply for your document and then everything is right, but then you are rejected for no explanation or you feel like something is unfair, please share with me and then I can see how I can pick it up from there with my superiors. Next slide, please. Yes, so thank you so much. This marks the end of my presentation. And please remember, even after this call, each and every time you have any query about the immigration, please remember to call 1345. That's the immigration hotline number. And we usually work from 9 a.m. until 10 p.m. during the weekdays. And communication in English is available. All right? 
So thank you so much. And I'll leave, I'll open the floor now for any questions. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you so much, um, doctor. I uh, really appreciate your um, insightful and inspiring um, um, talk. And then also, um, it really serves as an eye opener. Um, so we understand that you're having a business um, trip and you still have other things to attend to. And mm -hmm. um, so we're going to um, take a couple of questions um, before you go. So I don't know if um, we have a users online with a question and then all people here that have questions. So any question? And as we ask the questions, can you please uh, share this, the, the other file, that uh, the PDF file? OK. Mm -hmm. So you can be sliding down to the next page. So, um, our monitor, can you please share the the PDF on the group chat? Yes, yes. but not the PDF, but the file. The oh yeah, sorry, the PDF file. Yes. Not the PPT, just the PDF file. The PDF file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can pause on the, okay? You see on this page, they are showing the different types of visas. And they are giving details about each and every one of them. Oh, okay, I'm seeing some very some questions. Can someone please read the questions? Okay. Yeah. Uh, where are the questions? Where are the questions? Okay. okay yeah so we have um we have a question here that says um by the Borg active solution okay what is the penalty for not applying for visa renewal at the right time okay that's a very interesting question and as i said earlier i don't deal with this particular case like i don't deal with this section actually but i know it's a serious penalty what that simply means is that you are in the country illegally if you don't renew the visa on time i know that there are cases that i heard my colleagues talk about it saying that every year that passes you have extra fine there's an amount you pay extra per every day that it passes that's one how much i don't know exactly and then the, the fee changes and secondly you might be faced with direct deportation and ban from entry into korea okay, okay? okay. but then the last thing that i like to mention is if you are in that kind of situation quickly go to the immigration don't let them catch you or don't be in a situation whereby the immigration will find out so it's better you report automatically by yourself okay yeah so the next question is um so please um if you're asking a question um you know we have um we still have a we have two speakers so you can um um specify question guest speaker one guest speaker two because immediately after the q a for the second guest speaker we'll have our first guest speaker on the floor to answer all our questions so please just indicate which question is for who so the next question is um um are there ample job opportunities for English speaker? I believe it's for you, Dr. Musadan Karimi. Oh, okay. That's a very interesting question. Uh, wow. It's outside my scope of work because I deal with immigration. I'm not an employer. So honestly speaking, what we have seen, most English-related speaking jobs are teaching jobs. That's the reality of the matter. And the other companies that hire English-speaking English speakers require you to have a le level of fluency in korean so usually this is what we always tell people if you're able to communicate fluently in korean then you, there are ample enough jobs for you but if you cannot communicate in korean and only speak english then your scope is only limited to teaching jobs and especially if you're a native speaker okay mm -hmm. thank you sir so the next question is um can ARC issued in a different province be renewed in another province when it's lost? So this is what happens on that issue. 
uh, if you move from province, let's say from Jolado, and then you come to Busan, for example, and that's where your point of residence is, even though you issued your, your IRC in Jolado, you can still renew it here in Busan. Why? That's where your address is linked to the ARC. However, if you're in Jolado and come to Busan and you lose it here, most likely the immigration in Busan, we will not accept it. We will not access to renew your IRC. You need to go back to Jolado. All right, thank you, sir. So I think mm -hmm. the last question we have here, I don't know if there's any other question here for you, um, for those that are attending physically. So before we move to the Q&A for the first speaker. So the last question here is, um, why are we giving visa duration less than um, less than our our period of stay for study? Oh, very good question. And the reason behind this is many folds. Uh, one, for example, as a master's student, even though you have, your program is two years, there is no guarantee that you will stay for the two years to finish your master's degree. Many things can happen. One, you might drop off after your first semester. Or second, you might decide to delay and even take the next semester off. But in case you do so, and we the immigration gives you two years, it means you can just stay and enjoy yourself, do whatever you want. So the immigration actually doesn't want that. That's why in general, it gives one year for master's degree students. And in some special cases, they give you two years for the full length of the master's program. So that's what I know. So just so that you just be checking in in the immigration and to show that you are consistently studying and working. That's just like the, the government rule, basically. And some people get lucky to have one year, others get two years. That also depends on the program and also the document you submitted and maybe your previous history or that of your country people in the country. So um, thank you so much, um, Doctor. So um, that's the last question. Um, however, I have a more of a kind of a personal question or kind of more insight. So um, mm -hmm. would you say that, uh, do you, first of all, sir, do you um, understand Korea very well? Uh, very well. Uh -huh. It's a tricky one. I'll say I'm high, high intermediate because I did a TV show in Korean. OK, awesome, awesome. I'm a reporter cool. in Korean language. <laughs> Yeah. So, would you say that um, the your ability to um, understand Korean and all of that is pivotal in um, the smooth transition from one visa status to the other? Yes, I would say so. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So that means um, it's highly encouraged that people um, try to um, absolutely get that to go through absolutely. any route in terms of visa work, even though it's not and needed in some of the points, basis, and all of that. That's right. And let me explain a little bit more on that. You yeah. see, the question you asked me depends on if you are interested in living long term in Korea. In that case, absolutely, yes. But in any way, logically speaking, you're living in Korea. Korea is not an English speaking country. Korea is a Korean language speaking country. Yeah, so please. Korean ability is a must. So thank you so much. I actually asked the question for you to um, buttress it because personally I've had that um, experience as well. And um, mm -hmm. um, if I'm to rewind back to three or four years ago when I came into Korea, I think the first thing I will try to do is to understand the Korea itself. Because mm -hmm. um, since 2021, I finished my master's. So it's been um, really a roller coaster in, because of that Korea language. But um, opportunities that, and, and also to person that asks for opportunities for English speakers, they are kind of a limited of, um, those opportunities are limited, but if you kind of target um, multinational, um, international mm -hmm. organizations, um, mm -hmm. like IRENA, Green Climate Fund, and all of those, then you may not have the challenges of the English speaking, but it's very, very limited because that's, that's actually me. what I did and actually worked for me. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much, sir. My pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. And yeah. I wish you all the best in the symposium. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. So, um, thank you, everyone. So, we'll um, like to bring back our first um, guest speaker um, back to the um, podium to um, give us some uh, more clarifications and also to answer some um, specific um, questions. So, um, before, um, I don't know, should I ask the questions now or when you on the podium? We have some questions for our speakers for you, Mark. Yeah. 
Can I, I'm very sorry, can I some of you inform? Because, uh, yes, previous I heard from him and uh, he informed you guys that something, yes, misunderstood. So, uh, can I tell that? Yes. Uh, 비자 관련해서 잠깐 얘기를 드리면, 아까 여러분들이 한국에서 uh, 조금 전에 설명하신 분이 D8 세세 A 에 관해서 D8 비자에 대해서 말씀하셨습니다. 이거는 외국인 투자 촉진법에 따른 겁니다. 그래서 법인을 세워서 투자를 하는 거기 때문에 이거는 여러분들 혼자서는 한국에서 만드실 수 없고요. 여러분들이 혼자서 한국에서 회사를 만드시면 D9 비자로 가셔야 됩니다. 그거를 착각을 하실까 봐 말씀드립니다. Actually, the second lecturer mentioned uh, about the D8 visa, but D8 uh, visa cannot be done like alone. You should create kind of a uh, company and rather you should go for a D9 visa so it can be very um, confusing. So I just wanted to mention this. D8 visa 같은 경우는 uh, 자본금이 uh... 제가 알기로 3억에서 5억인데 정확하진 않습니다만 어, 자본금이 3억에서 5억 정도 들고요. 혼자서는 만들 수가 없습니다. 한국 사람이랑 같이 만드는 회사 법인이어야지만 가능한 거고요. D9은 여러분들이 혼자서 회사를 만드실 수 있습니다. 3억이 얼마죠? 3,000,000. 3,000,000. 3,000,000. 3,000,000. You need at least 30 uh, the f or for to uh, to be able to create a company with D8 visa, you should at least um, approve the bank account with 30, uh, three, 30 million billion million uh, Korean won, right? 30 billion. 30 billion Korean won. No, it's. 30 billion, sorry, Korean won, because it's in Korean won. So it's very, you know, huge one. So it cannot be done, like, it's hard to be done alone without creating an ad company. So, and it should be created with a Korean partner who is a Korean citizen, because it's kind of popping personal, um, the pop. Just sorry, I've just checked the term. Uh, the corporation, so the, to, to be able to create a corporation, it should be done with a Korean citizen. So it's not, it may not apply or apply for your case. And now you can continue to ask your question, please. First question is, you can actually be said be extended. We have like, if my wife is in Nigeria, can I extend my wife's visa here? Cannot. Okay, no, right? Yeah. So what's your first visa? What's your first visa? F three. F3. Yeah, she's my dependent. Ah, uh, your, your wife. Yeah, so, can I do that for her? Uh, yes, if she want to extend her visa, she can do in Nigeria. In Nigeria. So, if uh, just uh, she can apply, but I don't know is if uh, they uh, accept or not. I don't know. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, um, the next question is uh, 
you mentioned about the, the transition step from D2 to F5. So it had a um, number of years, maybe three years, five years, and all of that. So now, assuming you're in D2, and the oil in one stage, you know, maybe my brain to D10, and then you come back to that ESA stage. Will it, will it start counting afresh, or it's a continuous counting? Uh, when you get D10, it's just uh, two years. So if you get that, uh, you will get the visa E7. But when you quit your job, you can change in D10 again. But only two years in your life. So you can make, uh, seems like a cut, 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 but it's okay until two years. But uh, when you wanted to get, I, I can understand, because if I told you uh, D2, E7, F27, F5 is more better, better. So, so why do you want to back? It's, uh, and F27, F27, when you get that time, say, you have to prepare for changing e, uh, F5. But if you, you don't have a job, you can get back D10. But if you have a D10 uh, period. So for D10 visa, if you got two years, then you cannot renew it anymore because the limit for each person is fixed as two years. Thank you. Um, the next question is um, um, on in relation to the F3 visa. You mentioned that um, for dependent work, there's, uh, one has to earn an amount of money, which is similar to that of the Korean. So um, the person would like to know what is the what is that amount of money? <laughs> 네. So, did you ask him about F3? Yeah, so asking about the amounts related to the um, F3 visa that will enable the, um, the dependent working. Yeah. Actually, money is not important. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not the money which matters, but it's her qualification okay. that matters. Then the next question is related to this also. So mm -hmm. the next question is uh, uh, currently there's no um, we need clarity as to whether F3 are allowed to work or not. If they are allowed to work, how can they do it? Mm -hmm. And if they are not allowed to work, why and what? Is there anything that's been done? F3 visa dependent on the worker. 못하는 아예 못하는지 만약 할수 있다면 어떤 어떤 조건 내에서 일을 할수 있는지 몰라요. <웃음> 어, F3 비자에 관련돼서는 어, 되게 다양합니다. 그래서 F3가 할수 있는 거는 E2, E7의 자격 활동이 있는데 이거는 그 사람의 각 개인의 어, 그 뭐라 그래야 되지? 학력이나 자격증이나 이런 거에 따라 다 다르기 때문에 제가 일괄적으로라는 얘기는 못 해드려요. E7 해봐요. F7 물어본 거죠. E7에서 이제 E7으로 커서 일을 하는 거예요. F7도 일을 할수 있는 그 조건이 허가된 조건이 다르다는 거. 자, F7에서 F 아 F3 네. F3에서 비자를 가지게 되면은. 예, 다른 비자를 갖게 됩니다. F3가 유지가 되는 게 아니라 이 사람이 별도로 일을 할수 있는 허락을 받는 거여서 그거는 조금 다른 비자입니다. 잠깐만. Actually, uh, you cannot uh, continue to have F3 visa to be able to work. You should change slightly the visa status to be able to work as dependent. So um, let me continue. F3는 그 사람에 따라서 다 다르기 때문에 제가 뭐가 된다 안 된다 얘기할 수가 없어요. 
for the F3 visa holder to be able to work, um, the condition um, for her or him to uh, work is very various. There um, are very various cases, so uh, I cannot uh, speak here um, in a general way because it's so complicated. 자, 지금 여기 보시게 되면 이게 F3에 관련된 비자 타입입니다. 근데 이 비자로 시작을 해서 아, 이거 이게 좀안 돼요. 이거 누가 좀 바꿔 주실 수 없어요? Mouse is not good working. So I I I cannot. 네. No, no, no. Before I couldn't. 체류 자격의 활동 허가 범위가 굉장히 넓고 다양합니다. 그래서 어 공공 단체에서 외국어 교열 교열 할수 있고요. 그다음에 외국어 강사 할때 근데 이거는 국가도 해당이 돼요. 그래서 컨디션이 다 달라요. 어, 국가라는 건 배우자의 국적. 그러니까 본인 그 배우자의 국적과 그러니까 예를 들어 나리 나이지리아 분이랑 어, 미국 분이랑 결혼을 하셨어요. 그럼 미국 분은 일을 하실 수 있어요. So, for example, um, the dependent can work as an English teacher, but if the dependent is Nigerian, then she cannot. But if the dependent is U.S. citizen, then she's allowed to work as an English teacher. Thank you. Um, so, uh, the next question and second to last question is, uh, what is the minimum point that is needed for the second visa extension for DK? So, like, since the is the is it point based? No, detail. Yeah, you know the first. He mentioned that the first detail is free. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't need a um, proof of fund. You don't need anything. Then the second time, you need proof of fund. Do you need to acquire any points? Maybe like um, in the is it point based or is also just smooth? Ah, 자 포인트라고 얘기를 한 거는 아 그거에 대해서는 어떤 거를 얘기하냐 그러면 첫째. 여러분들이 한국에서 취업 활동을 하기 위한 어떤 노력을 했는지를 써서 내야 되고요. 처음에 1년 후에 두 번째. 아니, 6개월 후에. 6개월 후에. After 6 year um for the first 6 year it's really easy to get the 10 but after 6 year to be able to re 6 months sorry <laughs> to be able to renew the D10 visa then you should prove your efforts in a job searching. 아, 그렇게 해야지 되고 여러분들의 통장에 제가 알기로는 500만 원인데 약 600만 원이라고요? 언제 그 얘기를 들었어요? 지난주에? When did you know? Last week. Last week. Last week. Yeah, six weeks. To where? Immigration. Immigration. Yeah. It's minimum of one million. Minimum of one million times six. So six million. Um, each month, it's yes. million, yeah. Yeah. Oh, last week. Uh, I was at the immigration last week and we gave a printout. So, so. Can I go? I'm going to go. So, 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 I'm going to go. 아, F5 영주권 얻을 때 기존 제시한 금액이 8천만 원이었는데 저 같은 사람이 싸워서 6천만 원으로 낮췄거든요. 근데 원래는 한 달에 한 토탈 6개월에 500만 원이 필요했어요. 근데 지금 100만 원이 올랐다고 하니까 그렇게 되면 600만 원을 얘기하는 겁니다. So as Mr. Hamza checked uh, last week, it was um... 1 million uh, Korean won for each month, so uh, in total 6 million. Um, and, 그 무슨 8천만 원그 비자 어떤 비자였죠? 아, 영주권 받으려면 and for, 8천만 원이었는데, uh, 6천만 원을 낮추고. And to apply for, um, to be eligible for F5 visa, uh, before it was 8 million won um, to prove in your bank account, but we um, negotiated with the government and lower this limit as 60 a million one. So if you um, deliver your personal story to me, if you can share your story, then based on this, I can negotiate with government and um, 
maybe uh, talk to them to so that they can improve their regulations. Uh, 여러분들께서는 한국어 공부를 많이 하셔야지 됩니다. 그렇지 않으면 한국 기업은 여러분들의 취업을 받아들이기가 굉장히 어려울 겁니다. So to find a job in Korea to be accepted in uh, in Korean company it's important to be able to speak Korea so I highly recommend you to keep um, your efforts to learn and improve your Korean level. Yes. Last question is uh, how can um, an F3 visa or the any points? F3, if you're ordering an F3 visa, that's a dependent, right? So, how can um, the F3 endpoint and can you do part time work with F3 visa? I told you the independent, different. Different, okay. Yes. Nationality and education, and they will check about here. Plus, uh, wife, uh, wife, uh, husband, or uh, they care about husband visa or something like that. So about S three V. A visa holder so that um, the dependents can work the nationality matters and uh, also um, the visa of it, his husband or her husband or um, wife matters and also the final degree matters final degree of dependence so based on these different conditions the and government will determine if you if your dependent can work or not 간혹가다가 비자 때문에 지원 비자로 변경을 하시는데요. 지원 비자로 변경하실 경우에는 여러분들이 어, 다른 비자로 변경이 안 되십니다. And sometimes because of your visa condition, um, some people want to get G1 visa, which is a refugee uh, seekers. Uh, register refugee visa, but it, once you turn your visa into this G1 visa, then it's really hard to um, get another um, proper visa. So please don't do this. If you want to change in G1, you cannot change in other visa. G1 meaning is a re uh, refugee registered refugee visa. Uh, G1 has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of kind of visas. So, if you, and when you get a refuge, when you register at G1-5, meaning it's independent, different, because uh, immigration they never give you uh, for uh, never allow when you are working in here. So don't do that. Just to, if you want to, uh, extending your visa, so if you want to uh, uh, apply G1, that is not good to you. Even when you are going to another country, we don't know our future. So we don't know if we have another opportunity or something like that. But if you are registered in here, refugee, that means you cannot go into another country. All of people forgot that. So if uh, that country, for example, USA or Canada and New Zealand, yes, they will check your uh, visa when you stay in Korea. So you can uh, even, if, we, if you have a GION, and you can even, you can uh, apply an, uh, another country for a job, but they never accept. That is very important. So don't do that. So, so um, how can we reach you? That's the last question. Ah, Facebook is B-I-A-L-E-E. My name is B-I-A-L-E. My name is B-I-A-L-E. The most important thing is to call me please. 장난치지 않았으면 좋겠고 제 휴대폰 번호는 010 
5090-3443번입니다. 010-5090-3543-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544-3544
um, your prayer, your acceptance of we coming to your DM um, to ask you questions. It really means a lot to other Nigerians here in Korea. Thank you so much, sir. So we're only going to take um, one or two questions um, as um, uh, our honorable uh, Mr. Kimfe, um, Adewale Akifewa is um, busy. So if I have any question online or um, physical, just one or two, um, we'll be glad to take it. Any questions, please? Good. Any questions to our counselor? All right, sir. So there's a question here from um, um, one of um participants and also an advisor of um, the NSA here. Um, is um, the question is um, is it required to authenticate our certificate? Assuming you finish your master's or PhD and you have your certificate, is it required to authenticate it before leaving South Korea? Okay, if it, uh, that is built authenticated, you want to use the master's maybe in Nigeria? Is that what you're saying? If you want to use it in Nigeria, uh, yeah, I want to use it um, in Nigeria or any other country outside um, South Korea. Yes, definitely. Nigeria, each embassy authenticates documents that come from its own country. So we are the Nigerian embassy, we authenticate Nigerian documents. So uh, any Korean document would be needed to be authenticated by either the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here or Maybe if you're already in uh, Nigeria, maybe but, uh, you, by the embassy there. So I would just advise you that maybe you get uh, Korean documents, you may authenticate them before you go back to Nigeria, or maybe you are going to a third country. We know different countries have different rules. So uh, I can't, that is not, that's not a yes or no answer, but it's just to be on the safe side. You know, even, even right here in Korea, we sometimes see that some Korean uh, universities ask you to authenticate let's say for example your your psc before you do an msc some may not ask you to authenticate your psc before you do an msc but when you are going from msc to phd they may ask you to authenticate authenticate the, the psc that you that was not authenticated when you did your msc so it it, it, it varies from uh, institution to institution and from country to country but just to be on the safe side you know you may get them authenticated yeah all right Thank you so much, sir, for the clarity. Um, the last question for you, sir, is um, someone asking on via um, the online chat is, when is the ideal time for passport renewal? Is it one year or six months? Uh, six months. Our uh, 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 immigration officer is not here, but any, you must, your, your, your passport must be valid for six months or less before you can renew it. And then, of course, the passport, uh, Days, the immigration days at the embassies are Mondays and Wednesdays, 11 a.m. to 3, 3 o'clock, 3 30. All right. Um, thank you so much, sir, for um, finding our time to um, answer okay. into some of our okay. questions. Okay. Um, uh, and like I said, you can always call me, you can chat me up uh, anytime, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to answer you. Okay, then. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir. So uh, we really appreciate your presence, sir. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, um, Mr. President, someone is asking um his number, so I think he will share it. So it's going to be shared on the chat. So um we are about to draw the curtain of this event, but before we draw the curtain, we have two pending questions, and then we'll have a closing remark from the pioneer, the founder, and the pioneer president, the founder of NSA KNU. So now are we ready for the questions? For a brain teaser, we really need to have a winner. So it seems like we have a tie right now. So the next question, which is our fourth question, is uh, drum rolls. So you are in a race for one week. That's the question. Are we ready? No one is actually answering. Are we ready? Yes, yeah. So we are ready. So you are in a race for one week. You are in a race for one week, Monday to Sunday. On Monday, you are positioned seventh. And by Wednesday, you pass the person in position third. And on Saturday, you pass the, pos the person in position second. What position would you be on Friday? The question is this. You are in a race for one week. On Monday, you are on the seventh position. By Wednesday, you've passed the person 
in fifth position. You are in seventh position on Monday. By Wednesday, you pass the person in fifth position. Then by Saturday, you pass the person in second position. What position will you be on Friday? We have 30 seconds. Drum rolls. All right. How many people say first position? Well, if you had said first position, you would have gotten it right if that was not the question. You actually got it wrong. So, how many people say third? Third position. Yeah, third position. You are very close, but nearly cannot kill a bird, right? So how many people say fourth position? But before fourth position, let's see. Who even, how many people say fifth position? No one say fifth position. I'm afraid. Fifth position is not the right answer. The right answer is fourth position. So this is how it works. On Monday, you are on the seventh, your seventh position on Monday. Wednesday, you passed the person in fifth position. Once you pass the person in fifth position, it means you are in fourth position. Then on Saturday, you pass the person in second position, which means you are in fourth position. But the question is, what position are you on Friday, which is fourth position? So, last question, and we are going to determine. Um, but for you to be able to answer this question, you need to know me personally before you be able to answer this question. So, and I know a lot of people know me personally. So, the question is this. In my family, right, in my family, we are, okay, in my family, we are 13 in my family, and um, all of us, uh, we are 13 in our family, and all our names start from A, except the person in 12th, that's the 12th person. And um, they usually call our mother, Mama Ben. What letter is the 12th person's name starts from? We are 13 in our family, and all of us, our name starts with A, except the person in the 12th position. And they usually call our mom, Mama Benjamin. So what letter does the name of the 12th born in my family starts from? All of us in our family, our name starts from A. You have to know me personally for you to be able to answer this question. That is just the fun. If you don't know me personally, you'll be able to answer the question. They call our mom, Mama Ben. So what's the name of the, what letter does the person in 12th position, what letter does the name start from? All right, um, drum rolls, 30 seconds, and then we're going to determine our winner. Moderators, please, are we collecting the people with the most answers? So we'll have our Starbucks for them. So it's a very tricky, simple question. So when I say you have to know me personally, it's just a decoy. So you don't have to know me before you'll be able to answer the question. All of us, our names start from A, except one person, which is the person in the 12th position, and they call our mother, Mama Ben. Automatically, it means that the fourth person's name is Ben, the 12th person's name is Ben, and Ben starts with letter B. So all the people that says B actually got it right. <laughs> so let's see. Moderators, the people that got, Emmanuel got three answers, right? So um, the winner of this um, brain teasers after the five questions is um, Emmanuel Adewi. So Emmanuel, congratulations. You won a Starbucks, right? Yeah, so um, thank you very much for joining virtually, for joining physically. Um, it's been an honor being here. Um, I remember an humble self, Mohamed Tofi Kamza, popularly known as Tip Top Hamza. And before I hand over, I would like to call on our professor here,
um, Professor Abdul Hamid Owolabi Babatsunde to give us a closer remark. Um, he is the pioneer um, founder of the Nigerian Student Association, Kyungpuk National University chapter, and um, he is um, pivotal in um, actually the transition in, in terms of the numbers of students that we have many years ago from two students to about 100 students right now. So it's um, an honor to um, invite him to give us a closing remark. And um, during the course of this event, um, the one of the uh, presidents of NSAKNU also arrived um, within the person of engineer Adeshina, uh, engineer Muhammad Awal Adesh, doc, engineer Dr. Muhammad Awal Adeshina, you are welcome. Uh, yeah, so, um, I know you may not want me to leave, but men, we live to fight another day. So if I don't leave today, I won't be able to come back to give us. Um, yeah. Um, so without uh, me leaving today, there's no, I'll be able to come around next time to also host any events. So if you have any events anywhere in the world, feel free to follow me. I'm very free. So I would also like to recognize the presence of all the uh, members and then the escorts of um, NSAKNU person of um, Abib, um, popularly known as Breezy, present here physically. We have um, um, Usaina, who has joined um, virtually, and um, other escorts, um, um, including Naomi, and other escorts that actually contributed to this um, um, event. Um, thank you very much. And without wasting um, your time, I would like to hand over to Professor Abdul Amid Owola Abib Abatunde, to give us a closing remark. And in case you finish the closing remark, you can't see me, just know that I am on a bull. Thank you. Hello. I want to say thank you to, first and foremost, Ms. Lee. Your presentation was well taken and we really appreciate the time you took to run us through what it takes to be uh, fully settled in South Korea. Uh, Without mincing words, South Korea is going to be part of our history, even if we all decide to leave South Korea today. And in making sure that Korea is part of our history, we have to at least acknowledge those that have made one or two impacts in our lives. So you, just knowing you for today and the passion you have for foreigners, I can say that you are someone we should at least roll with. And so I want to say thank you. Uh, in Korea, I want to say Kamsamida. Uh, don't mind my Korean fluency. So this is my seventh year in Korea, but I cannot even say Wangpae. So that is one thing about me. In Korea, I can't say Wang Pai, but at the same time, I can say Kamsa Amida. Uh, and at the same time, I want to extend appreciation to Dr. Uh, Musa. He, sp he also spoke excellently well, and I believe not me alone, every one of us learns one or two things from him. And, and like he said, he's always there for us if we need one or two clarifications. And you, uh, Miss Lee, already said that as well. And I want to urge each and every one of us to make use of this opportunity so that we'll be able to at least uh, get our feet going in South Korea. So thank you, Miss Lee. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dan. And a very special thank you goes to my president in person of uh, engineer Anis. He has took this association to uh, a zenith, let me use that word, so, and he has laid some 
examples in which anyone coming after him has to make sure is either the person gets to what he has done or the person beats what he has done. So uh, thank you so much. I'm extending the thank to all the ESCOs as well because uh, Engineer Anis cannot do this alone. And I want to extend the appreciation to the, uh, the special advisor of NSA in person of Dr. Uh, Adelodun Bashir. Whenever people are addressing or maybe inviting me on the podium, they always say uh, the first person to come to South Korea, yes. In Nigeria, not in Korea, sorry, in KNU. I want to, I always say it if I have the opportunity and I believe I have a little time to say it as well. Yes, I came in 2016 of August. Uh, Dr. Bashir came in 2017 uh, November, maybe a year after me, but at the same time, I was able to achieve everything I, I, I achieved today from by the special grace of Almighty Allah and uh, the assistance of Dr. Adeladun Bashir. So thank you so much for that. And especially, he is now the advisor of NSA and I believe NSA in, in the greater hands. So, and I want to extend my, the appreciation to all members of NSA as well, and both online and offline, and in extension to all Nigerians in Korea, I believe we are people that are determined. We, are, um, we have the zeal to excel wherever we are, and that has been our motto, irrespective of the tribe or maybe the religion, we are people of great nation with uh, determination to achieve so many things in life. So I appreciate each and every one of you. And I say thank you so much for making this program a reality. And I want to cap this by thanking God Almighty for giving us the opportunity to have for us to do this. And I want to thank myself as well and my family for coming to this place and for my wife to release me to come to this place as well, my kids. Thank you so much. Kamsa Amida. Short time. Maybe the people online can hold their can hold their videos and join.
And let them. Uh, let me do that. Thank you very much for joining. The program has come to an end. See you some other time. The um recorded video is online and to be shared, sent to is on YouTube and to be shared via email.